never worried about what other people thought. You know, that was one of the great things about my upbringing. My parents, and in particular my father, always told me that you know the opinions of people who are relevant don't matter to you. So I just went about um, my football in a no fuss sort of way. But yeah, look, Melbourne was a, a very proud club and a very old club, so I was, I was happy to end up there. But I would have played anywhere if it meant, you know, um, achieving my dream of, of playing AFL. In 2008, you contributed $10,000 of your own money to Melbourne's debt demolition campaign. What made you decide to do that? Uh, well, I just thought if we were asking, you know, supporters and, and fans and, you know, sponsors to donate money to the club, I thought the players should do the same. So it was just a, just a spur of the moment sort of thing. I was an, I'd, I'd just come off my ankle injury, so I... Um, I wasn't playing at the time, so I was able to have a few drinks that night. So maybe it was a combination of a few alcoholic beverages and um, the fact that I just wanted to help the club out. That you know that sort of came about. Mm. At the end of the 2009 season, you requested a trade to Carlton. What were the driving yeah. forces behind this, and did you leave the Demons on bad terms? No, I, I, look, I don't think I left the, the, the Demons on bad terms. I just I felt that I needed a fresh, uh, fresh start. I needed a, a new club. Um, I thought, I just felt my career had gone a bit stale and, um, you know, Melbourne just, I was coming off a pretty serious ankle injury, so resources um, in terms of the medical department and rehab facilities were were quite important to me and I just, you know, that was just part of the decision as well, that Melbourne didn't have those facilities, so it was just, you know, a, fit, a myriad of reasons which all sort of encompassed, you know, came together and um, yeah, I just felt a fresh start was, was the best, best order for me. Were there any times that you thought, you know, shit, hang on here, I may have made the wrong decision by leaving the D's? Yeah, look, my first year was frustrating, you know, injuries quite a bit. You know, I had no one to blame but myself. I just, I worked myself too hard over the off-season to, to get to Carlton because I wanted to make a, a really good impression. And then the second year, um, you know, my... I certainly felt my form was good enough. You know, I was getting best on ground in the VSL every week, but just through lack of opportunity, and I don't think the um, um, coaching staff were that keen for me to play that year. And so it was frustrating, but um, you know, not once did I lose faith in my ability and, and faith that I could get back and, and play at top level. And you know, I just hung in there, and it turns out that I got back in and. You know, did all right for the next couple of years. In 2012, you had a really good season and finished in the top five of the Blues, best and fairest. At the end of the year, your coach Brett Ratton was sacked and replaced by Mick Malthouse. Looking back, was that the wrong decision? Yeah, look, I certainly thought it was. At the time, I didn't. I um, I didn't know Mick personally, but you know, I was um, I was a fan from a distance, and I thought his reputation um, would do great things for the footy club. But you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But I just felt that Brett's coaching style in, in terms of his game style suited our group more than Nick's coaching style and his game style did. So, and, you know, you only have to look at the three years that that, um, that Nick was at the club and the, the club went backwards. You know, I think Brent was ha- uh, unfairly or harshly done by, I should say. He's, um, he's got a very, very good football brain. Mm, there was a lot of controversy surrounding your delisting from Carlton at the end of 2014. It was reported that you believed you were misled by the club about their plans for you and you ultimately found out about your delisting while overseas. What is your version of events? Hey, look, I was told that I was, I was the one to play before I left and, um, you know, they, they said, you know, there'll be a contract waiting for you when I got back and you know, I got the call when I was overseas. So, look, it, it was a little bit disappointing how it all ended, but I understand that, you know, that's football and that's how footy clubs operate now and, you know, it's, it's a pretty... Uh, brutal and, and ruthless industry. So you know, while I, you know, it didn't it didn't go the way I wanted. You know, that's why. You know, you just have to uh, pick yourself up and, and get back on with it again. Is it true that you're in a pub when you found out? <laughs> no, it was uh, it was Copenhagen Strip Club. Yeah. Were you pissed? Did you have a lot to drink? Were you? Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd had a few. Yeah, I'd had a few. I was uh, I was um, you know in the middle of a, a sort of a around the world trip and. Uh, I was just having a few beers with, with a random guy, uh, a few random guys that I met at the hostel, and yeah, we'd had a few, but I still had my wits about me, and um, the conversation got pretty heated with um, with Andy McKay. But you know, as I said, that's all water under the bridge, and you know, I wish the footy club nothing but the best.